everyone, and welcome back to the Hinkson Christian Podcast. Teacher guest! That's right, we Once again, Mr. Youngford on the show. Thanks for coming, man. Yeah, That's welcome. right, I am a teacher. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you forgot already. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, today we're doing things a little bit differently. Similarly to uh, the Miss Park and Miss Richmond episode, we're mm-hmm. having a Q&A. Before we get into that, we've got one announcement. What's happening? Uh, Spirit Week. Oh, mm-hmm. snap, oh, that's yeah. coming up. It right. started, so you can wear things that you normally aren't allowed to wear. Yeah, that's what it means. Get away with it. That's so all I'm going to wear my trunks. Nice. Me too. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Uh, Monday will be um, summer day. So you can just like come in a swimsuit and sunglasses. and Bruh. t-shirt. And, mm-hmm. Epic. So. That's how I'm doing. Uh, yeah. So that's the only announcement. Uh, let's jump right into the Q&A. Right. So. Cool. Eight questions. Uh-huh. How do you fake confidence? Asking for a friend. Oh. Some people want to look more confident. How do you? How do I fake confidence? Like if you're unconfident and you have to appear confident, how do you do that? (laughs) Well, my goodness. Um, To be fair, that would actually be quite a journey for me because Mm -hmm. I was terribly unconfident in, um, well, for a while. My first couple of years in school, uh, let's see, preschool, kindergarten, first, second grade, those were in a uh, Christian private school. And then I went to public school in third grade. And so I was always kind of an outsider and a dork Ooh. throughout elementary school. Mm-hmm. And then uh, middle school, I don't remember a lot. I do remember that I was picked on a lot. Mm-hmm. Relatable. Yeah. High school was better. Oh. High school was better to where I, the, the funny man started to come out. So it wasn't <laughs> so bad, you know. Um, plus, I got tall, which... That was cool. It's a plus. Um, you know, wearing a size 13 shoe. Mm-hmm. Though I went back down to 12 because the 13 just wasn't necessary. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, with uh, track and Boy Scouts and marching band, uh, you know, high school wasn't so bad. And then college was really cool because it was a chance to completely reinvent myself and be whoever I wanted to be because nobody knew who I was. Mm-hmm. And so the funny mm-hmm. man guy came out there but pretty much any comedian will tell you is that that funny man he's a defense you know and so he's Mm -hmm. keeping you at bay and and i realized that like well you know college even trying to you know talk to girls or something like that i could be funny and joke but actually getting into a conversation to to get to know somebody very difficult and so Mm -hmm. then it was just kind of uh re you know, kind of rebuilding, reconstructing that whole thing. So regarding confidence, confidence comes from just being completely comfortable with yourself and Uh just thinking, I'm me, I'm cool. Anybody else who doesn't know that I'm cool, they're stupid. Who cares about (laughs) them? So easier said than done, but that's really kind of confidence is just absolutely liking yourself. Mm -hmm. And, uh... What I remember being a teenager, that's it can be hard to do, so. Mm. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. That's a good. Okay, we'll just go take turns reading him questions. Okay. Uh, second question comes from, uh, I don't know who from, but any tips on getting hitched? Uh, I don't know what <laughs> hitched means. <laughs> but, uh, it's well, like. I believe hitched is getting married. Oh. So okay. all right. somebody wants to get <coughs> hitched. All right. Well. There's um, all the single boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we're just like, ugh. Okay. Honestly, I remember going to a concert when I was in high school. It was the Newsboys and Plank Eye. Dude. Mm. Back when they were cool, before they became Lame. uncool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But the, uh, the lead singer guy of Plank Eye uh, basically spoke up and uh, said a bunch of stuff. But in essence, he was like, you know what? There's really no reason to date in high school. You know, leave that for college. I remember thinking, but... Oh, wow. I um, want to date in high school. I want a girlfriend. But as I thought about it, I realized it was right. That made me mad that he was right because I still wanted it. Because right. it's like, what am I going to do in high school? Now, there is the benefit. And, uh, you know, just in dating, you learn how to socialize with the other side. <clears throat> you know, wow. with, with girls. Being comfortable with girls, that's important, you know. Yes. And for me, um, yeah, they were always kind of like like aliens, like they right. weren't really human. It was Boys like, episode. Wow. <laughs> you know, and, and then <clears throat> looking back on it later, I think to myself, my gosh, I was so stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So getting hitched, dude, well, first and foremost, you got to have your own life in order right. mm-hmm. before you get married. And yes. that, was, that was a benefit for me. You know, I spent eight years in Los Angeles uh, just, you know, working odd jobs and just enough to, to pay the rent. Learned a lot of stuff, had a lot of cool experiences, but... You know, marriage didn't come later. 
until, honestly, until I was ready to let go. Uh-oh. Cliche. Cliche. Here oh, we come. No. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> let go and let God, you know? And, uh, cliche. And, uh, but, but it's, it's true. It is. You know? Right. And so, so when I was ready for that, God totally introduced me to my wife. But in the mm -hmm. meantime, while you're single, you take that time and just be like, okay, God's going to bring her around when it's time. In the meantime, I'm working on me. Mm -hmm. So, again... Like cliche, put that on a t-shirt or bumper sticker. Yeah, but it's yeah. true. Everyone right. said it because it's true. There you go. Right. Right. All right. So question three: What is your least favorite mode of transportation? Oh. Oh. Ooh, my Excellent. least mode. Okay. Fa my least mode of favorite transportation. Yes. 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 Right. My least transportation favorite mode. Words. Least of. Right. Yes. Mark. What would be <laughs> my least favorite? Jeez. <laughs> <sighs> like, well, it's like really annoying and mm -hmm. like just a, just a hassle. Actually, yeah. I mean, it's it's manageable. The buses in Moscow are oh. really frustrating because right. in some places they're really inconsistent. Oh yeah, I feel like yeah. they're just sitting down there at the <clears> end and just like, hey man, you got to go down now. I probably should, but oh. I'm not gonna. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they really don't stick to any kind of schedule yeah so um but beyond that i would say um skateboard because i've never really ridden a skateboard and the times that i've gotten on i just knew oh yeah that i would die on this so <laughs> so so probably you know i could probably learn how to but i haven't and i won't it's so like I'll skateboard not fast and like you'll mm -hmm. die and a yeah, pebble yeah. it's just yeah now yeah. i've <laughs> seen some people that can really get somewhere on a skateboard i'm not one of them no, right. I was there so, one So, yeah. There you go. Favorite subject to teach and why? Okay. Oh, oh I see. You teach English and film and public speaking. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. it's really kind of interesting because uh, I got English, I got health. Oh, you have health, too. I got too. public right. speaking yeah. and film. <laughs> it really depends on the class more oh. than anything else. Right. Um, because, you know, right now my film class... Shout out to my film class. What? What? Nice. Because <laughs> that's what kids are saying these days. That's what kids are saying. Yes. So um, I've got a bunch of kids in my film class who are uh, willing to listen, learn, and uh, and try. Mm. And so they have done a whole bunch of cool video stuff, and they're working on doing more. And so that's been really exciting. They're going to have a whole bunch of cool videos to show at the end of the year. English is interesting. You know, the 10th graders are actually pretty solid. Chucky's an awful student, but the rest He's of them are pretty yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Shame on you. <laughs> oh, and of course, there's this Moses kid who's yeah. always who's quotation marks sick. Yeah. Yes. What's wrong with so, that? So, that one's pretty cool, just kind of looking at the books and talking about <clears> stuff. <throat> um, public speaking is kind of fun, but it can be kind of frustrating, though. A lot of strong oh, yeah. personalities <laughs> yeah. there, so... <laughs> So I don't know. It, it depends on the class and the time period. It really just comes down to, um, are we connecting? Mm -hmm. You know? So, uh... So deep. Are we connecting? Yeah. Are yeah. we connecting? But that's what it's about. Yeah, right. You know? How do you learn from teachers? By listening and thinking, okay, I'm going to consider what this person's saying. You know? Right. And as teachers, we look at our students and just think, are they engaged? Are they bored out of their minds? In mm -hmm. which case, if they are, then it's like, crap, I have to do something different. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. give us a break. It's hard being a teacher. So, I don't know if that answered the question or not. It's kind of a hard question. Well, because it's, yeah. you say it depends, right. basically. Oh, no, no. ESL. Wait. The favorite or the least favorite? <laughs> no, favorite. favorite. Okay, no, I don't like teaching ESL. <laughs> yeah. God bless you guys. But but yeah. that, that class is just frustrating. So, mm. hmm. Well, it sounds like currently your favorite is film. Mm. Would that be right. accurate? Or? Well, even that, though... It's, it's, they're doing a lot of cool stuff, but there's, there's, mm, mm, mm. I would say it's a toss up between, uh, maybe English and, and public speaking sometimes yeah. and, and, and film. Mm -hmm. So, so it's we'll, we'll, we'll okay. just do it there. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's a great question. Next, <laughs> it's just the word height. And What's your question mark? <laughs> oh, <laughs> how tall am I? Yeah. I am excellent question. Yeah. six feet four inches. Ooh. So let's oh, see oh, here. Wow. Six times thirty centimeters. So that's one hundred and eighty, and then four is approximately not ten. Math. One third of twelve. Two meters. So approximately one hundred and ninety centimeters. I think I'm a bit taller. One hundred ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, 
<laughs> Moses feels very short right now. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's not accurate. I thought that was more like 193, maybe 193. I wouldn't be surprised. Like that. I wouldn't be surprised. Wow. Yeah, about 193 centimeters. Uh, so that, that's two meters. Tall. Just two meters. No, no, I'm not two meters. Two meters is like a solid six and a half feet. You know, mm. I think it's like six, six, seven, six, nine, something like that. So, and six and a half would be six, six, but I think it's taller than that. Right. So six, four and a half. You know, yeah. the Duke. The Duke John Wayne, he was also six and four inches tall, with the half also, because that's how he spoke, Pilgrim. There you go. This is why we have you, just for these voices. <laughs> worst, worst John Wayne impression ever. Nah. <laughs> All right, question six. If you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? Mm. Oh my gosh. That's a, who, yeah. who asked that? <laughs> Cuts deep. That, that is a deep question. Yeah. Golly, I don't know. Okay, okay. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. Okay. Um, well, oh, geez. <laughs> that's, that's bold. That's yeah. bold. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose I would say, um, hello. Uh, my name's Nathan. Really happy to be here. Uh... Yeah, thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really interesting. That's that's hard because what hard. do you say? The world's attention. That's mm -hmm. a lot. Right. Um, Jesus loves you. Oh, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Oh, dude. Well, that that is honest. They but, would they uh, would tune that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, it's it's tricky. It's tricky. You know, it's um, I don't know. There's so many possibilities because you can yeah. go in the direction of like you know, communicate. All those people that you think that are bad people, they're not as bad. You guys, you guys actually agree on more things that you think. Right. And um, um, Antifa, get out of your parents' basements <laughs> and get a real job. <laughs> oh. Oh. You know, pick up a book and stop being a loser. Yep, there, loser. Is. there you go. There Maybe is. I'll just rail it on yep. Antifa because they are the biggest bunch of ignorant losers. <laughs> There you go. Do I have any members of Antifa out there? I probably don't. So you don't. Yeah. Nope. But <coughs> it's just it's a it's a bigger problem. Right. You know, like okay, Mr. and Mrs. Ford, my parents, they spawned me. Spawned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they lived through the '60s and '70s. They lived through you know uh, the civil rights movement and and women's rights. You know, and and what a lot of people don't realize is that the world is in a much better place now than they think it is. Yeah, you got so many people who are saying just like, "Oh, we're so oppressed and everything is so bad." It's not. It's not. Somebody posted on Facebook about um, they're Cubans living in the U.S. Oh. and talking about when Fidel Castro died. Mm -hmm. He died on Black Friday. When oh. was it? Like last year or something like that. <clears throat> and and someone posted, uh, "Sorry, Fidel, um, it wasn't how you thought it'd turn out. You die, and capitalism lives." I think that's actually how they did oh, it. But okay. just well, wow. but just the survival and a lot of stuff that people don't know is that living under communism in Cuba was mm -hmm. was awful. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you had all these people, you know, willing to to risk going across the ocean in these makeshift uh, rafts and whatnot to right. escape it? And then you've got all of these morons that are like, yeah, socialism is the way. Free everything for everybody, you know, because like love and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, uh, that was their plan in Cuba. And, and then, oh, and then totalitarian happened and, and tyrant and dictator and all these buzzwords and a whole lot of Cubans who celebrated this man's death. And uh, people say, well, but if you look at footage from Cuba, you know, there were people that were mourning his loss. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they were forced to mourn his oh. loss by the government. Wow. And so that is what socialism leads to every single time. And I just learned that from looking up stuff on Wikipedia to teach geography last year. Epic. So, so Antifa, read a book. Shut up. Quit bothering people. Right. <coughs> Moses right. still can't breathe. <coughs> I'm still <Yeah>. on the... <laughs> Go parents, ahead and say it again. Your parents spawned you in. <laughs> they did, it's true. They spawned me. Yeah, it's yeah. It's true, Moses. Yeah, yeah. He's still thinking about the word spawned. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, you know, your parents spawned you, and <coughs> your parents spawned you, and your parents... Yo, what yeah. They spawned you, too. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I don't know if that's <laughs> the most efficient, effective thing to say with 30, 30 seconds, seconds, but yes. it's what came to mind. And as a and human, Tifa. yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna you know waste opportunities just like everybody else. No, dude, I, as, I don't have, I don't know what to say for that. Right. Seconds. Question seven: mm-hmm. In a film remake of your life. Oh my! Oh, oh yeah. Who would play you? Charlie Franco. And who, and who, <laughs> <laughs> and who would play your wife? Oh. Ooh. Sweet fancy Moses. Well, that's a good question. That's a great Thank question. You. Oh, not you, dude. The oh, other one. The other one. Yeah. yeah you know what? We could make it you, man. Sweet fancy you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be playing Mr. Youngford. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Who would play me in my life? I don't know any. Um, let me think of of weird actors. Oh, you know, maybe Zoe Deschanel. She would play my wife. Hmm. Let's see. We'll go with her. And then who's gonna play play me? Let me who's see. Worthy to play Youngford. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, other uh, than me. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, I don't know if Chuck's available, so it'd have to be somebody yeah, else. Yeah, he's so yeah. booked. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll be busy here. traveling the world, so. Charles Bronson? No. Charles no, Bronson? Not Charles. Vince Vaughn? No, no, mm. no, no. Charlton Heston? No, no, he's too old. Hmm. Mm. That is tricky. First one to come to mind. Actually, somebody asked me this once. It was some dude who was asking random people random questions for a TV show. Mm-hmm. And I never saw the episode. I don't know if it aired or not. But they asked, like, you know, who would play you in your life story? Crispin Glover. Oh. So, oh. oh. Have you guys seen Back to the Future? Yes. Yeah. Crispin Glover played Marty McFly's oh. awkward dad. Oh. Uh-huh. uh-huh. All right, all right. So maybe he'd play me? I don't know. What about, what about the guy who plays Thor? Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a fair point. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth or Joaquin Phoenix. Mm. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. There it is. Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix plays me and Zoe Deschanel plays my wife. That's there you amazing. go. Bam. Wait, wait, wait. Who? Joaquin Phoenix? Yes, the Joaquin Phoenixes. Joker oh. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. That would Actually, be that's actually... a band. The Walking Phoenixes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because of Joaquin Phoenix. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a uh, Johnny Cash tribute band. Wow. Awesome. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. <clears throat> so the next, which is the last question, is gasp. Oh, what is the shawarma song? <laughs> what is the shawarma song? <laughs> the shawarma song. Shorma people song. actually, when you were about to come on, they were asking us to make you do the shawarma song. Yes, a lot oh, of yeah. people. Actually. Who asked about the shawarma song? I'm trying to. <laughs> must be a Russian student. Nope. No. No. Nope. Gasp. All right. Anonymous. Hot or shawarma. So shawarma. It must be. I don't remember the melody. I think it. Changes every time, but uh, uh, dobra utra možna shorma si siram i gripami i ostri sos chut 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 i chorni lavash pozhosta. Maybe it's like that. That's so. it. That's yeah, yeah. great. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Well, it basically just came out of me. Um, I learned how to order shorma in, mm. in Russian, oh. and, and then someone asked me to sing a Russian song once, and, and that's what came out, so, oh. so there you go. Oh. That is the shawarma song. That's so funny. That was mm. great. It has a lore Thank behind you. it. Mm. The lore. His whole backstory. Yeah. Every song has a backstory, yeah. except for pop singers. <laughs> yeah. They don't huh. have backstories. They don't. They're just paper cutouts. Uh, mm-hmm. Cool. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's it for the Q and A. Thank you to all the people that sent us questions. Yeah, good, good questions. Um, yeah. All right. So now we're getting into comment time. Oh yeah. First comment from Siojin Lee. Mm-hmm. What's your biggest three goals of your life? Wow. Mm-hmm. Another deep question. Another yeah. deep question. Uh, well, for me personally, uh, get rich and famous. Duh. One. <laughs> right. Um, get like platinum selling album. Jimmy Fallon. That'd be cool. Right. Jimmy <laughs> Fallon. Okay. It's been you made when you're on Jimmy Fallon. What about you, Youngford? What's your three biggest goals? Hmm, three biggest goals. Would I? I would like to have a production company. Oh. Specifically, um, well, here in Moscow, I'm a teacher. Yeah. And right. so, as long as that's my work visa, and so long as whatever I'm doing is teaching, and honestly, you can do a lot with teaching. Mm-hmm. And so, you've got people who just get together and make movies. But the idea of making movies, except those that are making the movies with me, they're students. Right. And so you're learning how to make movies by making movies. And we do a little bit of that in my film class, of course, but on a much larger scale. I have written a um, <laughs> film script for a feature film of my creature movie. And it's about, I would say, as I think about it, about 70% done. Because what makes a movie very important 
and ooh, like Segway or not, what's missing from a lot of modern movies is relationships. <clears throat> you right. must have a relationship and growth, struggle and growth, to really have a movie, because that is a person's story. Right. Now, there are some exceptions. You know, there's, there's also the one where the character comes in and changes the world around them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got Forrest Gump, or you've got The Hunger Games as two right. very broadly specific examples. You mm -hmm. know, she grows a little bit, but primary growth is coming from her into the world, and mm -hmm. that's consistent. But nowadays, you have all this empowerment nonsense, and mm -hmm. so they're afraid to have weak characters, or more important, even weak female characters. Right. Wonder Woman was an excellent movie. Because you see her learning and growing. And so that's why she is awesome. And other movies like Captain Marvel or Rey in Star Wars suck a whole right. bunch. Because they have no growth. In fact, actually, I realized recently that Kylo Ren is actually the hero of the Star Wars trilogy. Because he's the only one that has obstacles, growth, and change. Because mm -hmm. Rey stays the same throughout the whole thing. Right. And, uh, wow. So yeah. in the third movie, there's like five minutes of her like training in the forest. Oh yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. 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 Oh, and um, they totally stole that from Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. They stole that from Luke's training uh, oh. montage with Yoda, yeah. just to try and it's like, see, look, look, she's training, dude. Training what? You already gave her infinite power in the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. So Luke. you guys suck. Yeah. Mm. So, um, but yes, my script needs a little bit more. Um, relational development right. as far as the villain and the hero yeah. and uh, the heroine because you've got the uh, the guy and the girl and so um, so yeah that needs to be sorted out but it would be really cool to make this movie with students and they would go on to make their movies and so yeah but just a production right. company um, biggest goals in life so that would be one that's the one <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't know I guess just God brought me out here as a missionary, yeah. and so it's also my ministry. And for starters, you know, your biggest minister, ministry is relational, building relationships with people. When they know you, then they start to look at the fact of you being a Christian in a different way. They start to consider it. You're yeah. just some guy that says, hey, man, you need Jesus. Oh, thanks. No, I'm good. I had a burger earlier, so I'm fine, <laughs> you know? But, uh, so that's a starting point, and so I guess my ministry, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. what does that look like exactly? That's a goal. And, uh, um, you know, I don't know, kids someday, kids someday. a, uh, a, oh, a wow. nice, decent home, like this giant apartment here, so, <laughs> so yeah, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But, uh, right. but yeah, the, um, there you go. In general, you want to keep your goals like there's some focus, but leave room for change because you never know what might come up that you didn't expect. Wow. That's a good, that that's a, that's a good answer to the question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, Moses, your three goals. All right. I think I've thought about it. You have. Okay, number one mm -hmm. is stop being sick. <laughs> good call, man. That's a good yeah, goal. Good goal. Yeah. And second one is like just work. Just have something to work on, I guess. Your goal is to have something to work on. Yeah. Okay. And then the third one is to probably, like, do something that I want to do in the future. So, like, a big, a big thing, <coughs> like, a big dream that I want to do, as long as, like, a work that I want to do. So, just do that. So, so your goal is to, like, have a goal. Your goal sure. is Go to ahead. have a goal. Yeah. I mean, and your goal, goal is to yeah. do work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, sometimes someone's guys. goal is finding that goal, yeah. and that's not bad. It's, it's those not. people that go to college undeclared. Yeah. It's like, what's your major? It's a good question. Do you know what my major is? No? Oh, no I'm still looking. So. Yeah. Nice. That's right. All right. Well, okay. My three goals would be like, goal number one, um, be a therapist, help people with their issues. That's what mm -hmm. I always wanted to do. Imagine getting paid to do that. Like, that's just fun. Hmm. Um, secondly... Start a successful family in a nice house. That's like everyone wants that. Right. But, sure. you know. And number three, not be poor in the streets. That's a okay. good goal <laughs> for a college okay. student to have. That, that, yep. is, that is reasonable. Yes. So, yeah. Interesting. I feel like right. pretty realistic goals. Okay. Good, good job. Cool. Great question. Next sucks comment, Lee Seo Bang. That's, uh, that's your Seo That's definitely oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Honest opinions about my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, and side note, he commented on his own comment saying, 
you can criticize. You can oh, criticize. So you know. Wow. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what Syojin said? That's no, what that's Sioha what Sioha said. said. Oh, Sioha. Right. Um, <laughs> honestly, I don't really talk to your brother that much, mm -hmm. to be truthful. So, I don't... He's uh, seemed like a cool guy. Yeah. But that's all I got. I don't talk yeah. to him. What about you, Moses? Uh, about uh, Syojin? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a cool guy. Cool. Yeah, come on, don't cut what I said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, you should try out wearing deodorant. Oh, um, oh. It makes you smell really good. Right. So consider that. And also, uh, okay. <laughs> try to love your brother a little bit more. Because, um, you know, it's nice to, like, love your family. So, uh, yeah, try and appreciate your brother, both of you. We're like. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, that could, that could go out to Sioha also. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're throwing your brother under the bus here. Yeah. He's like, you can criticize, no. please criticize him. Yeah. Sioujin, um, yes, the uh, deodorant thing <laughs> is good advice, but that goes for all of you nasty teenagers. Yep. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's very true. Honestly, Sioujin is a terribly confident fellow. <laughs> yeah. he, is not, he is confident. not bothered by anything. <laughs> It's, it's like, man, he does whatever the H he wants. It's really <laughs> irritating sometimes. So maybe, Syojin, you could take some of this willpower and maybe focus it into something more productive. So, uh, honestly, he's a surprisingly strong guy because yeah. he comes off as kind of a goofball. And uh, apparently there's a brain there. Who knew? I love, so. I love how we're like, oh, he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. You should wear a deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I've been working with uh, Seojin in ESL on his essays. And, uh, you know, Seojin, you actually have some stuff to say in my class. So right. well done. Keep that up. But yes, maybe you could use your willpower in more constructive ways than disrupting my class. Okay. So that's all I have that's to fair. say. Wow. <laughs> All right, um, next comment. Next comment from... How do you like that tough guy? <laughs> <laughs> from Ji Hyung Lee. Uh, he says, talk about your favorite song. All right. Oh, oh, uh, all righty. Uh, actually, my, I don't like have a favorite song right now, but usually I enjoy music like without lyrics. Lo-fi. Yeah. Like, Lo-fi and stuff like that. He's a chill brother. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And if you're going to do lo-fi, you should get into some of the, the jazz and bebop from the 50s and 60s. That's see what's true. up. So yeah, that's goes for true. both of you. If you guys are musicians. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gufford. <laughs> if anyone has a favorite song to share. <coughs> um, not, I, I don't want to say I'm like you. I don't really have like a favorite, favorite song. Ever, right. right? I'm yeah. just like I like whatever sounds good. It like depends on my mood, really. If I'm depressed, like I need like a super chill song that's just like relaxing, right? You know. But if yeah. I'm hype, I want a song that like complements my hype. Like right. yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I also like Lo-Fi Light like Moses. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm just gonna go with that, Charlie. Uh, first one that comes to mind is World Star Money by Joji. Oh yeah, that's a good one. It's a right. very simple song. Uh, <laughs> Like low production quality, it, it's like a lo-fi song basically, right. pretty just much with words and singing. Yeah. Um, and I just I love the lyrics, I love the meaning. I've listened to the song for years by this point. I just it, it's always been there for me. So that song's been there for you. I love that song. Also, like any song from Vessel by Twenty One Pilots. Mm. Uh, right. That album helped me through a pretty difficult time. Okay. So. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, that the, to me. it's these yeah. superficial meanings that like make it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Right. Oh, I've probably. also, that song has just been around, like, for me personally for so long. He always plays it. Uh, <laughs> just, like, I, I just love, like, the five different parts, the way that it starts, and just, it's like a story in a song. It just, it, it, it's so good. It has mm -hmm. so much packed into it, and, uh, yeah, I just really like the song, so. You don't get songs like that these so days. So there's a handful of my true. True. It's true. Yeah. Just favorite songs. What's that? What's your favorite song ever, though? Favorite song ever is ever. impossible. I'll do my best impossible. to to, yeah. to give you a top five here. So let me see what I can come up with. Uh, first instinct is Jerry was a race car driver by Primus. Mm -hmm. That one's pretty awesome. And that. then uh, let's see here. Where do you go from here? Burning Match in Hand by Training for Utopia. Mm -hmm. That one is a Christian thrashcore band from the 90s and they oh. became Demon Hunter. Oh and so 
But that one, that song is really, really cool. And so that's two. We're getting a glimpse and, of your music and, knowledge. Uh, indeed, yeah. indeed. And so let's see, let's branch out a little bit here. Um, this is dead. You know, I'll, I'll throw it in because it is good. Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. Yeah. That's, that's a great that's song. Great song. Yeah. Yeah. That's a song. Interesting. And, uh, you know, let's get some Tom Waits in there. Tom Waits is good. Uh, let's see here. Favorite Tom Waits song? Dude. Ooh, that's awesome. tough. There are two albums that he did that were really good. Mm -hmm. um, Rain Dogs and Swordfish Trombones. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. so each of those is pretty solid. I guess my first instinct, though, would be uh, 16 Shells from a 30 out 6 by Tom Waits. That's mm -hmm. off of uh, Swordfish Trombones. That's all one word. Swordfish Trombones. Just run it all together. <laughs> why, why is it named that? <laughs> Don't know. That's what he called it. Because okay. Tom Waits is weird, and that's cool. Yeah. But I also like Gun Street Girl. That one's a cool song, too. So, mm -hmm. so what do we got here? So we got Tom Waits, and we've got... Burning Match in Hand. We've got Jerry was race car driver by Mr. Primus. Blue Sky. Mr. Blue Sky. One more. Yeah. Um, uh, this is a really cool song, just completely out of left field. Music for Eels by mm. Sven Liebeck. Some Scandinavian dude who did uh, movie soundtracks in the 60s, but specifically like nature documentaries. And so, but this song is totally like classic 60s retro swing. So mm -hmm. that's just a really cool song. Mm -hmm. So Weird name. that, I, my best I could really do would be a top 10, but we'll stick with top five. That's what comes to mind now. Yeah, I, but honestly, the bands <laughs> that I'm going through, I listen to a lot of music every day. So, yeah. so yeah. there you go. Last comment. You can read last comment. Yeah. All right. Last comment. What is one, just one thing that nobody else on earth knows except you? Mm. Sweet Fancy Moses. That's, this is from Esther. That, that's from yeah. Esther. That's from yeah, Esther. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Not right. one thing that I know. <laughs> She's trying to outdo that her first question. Nobody on earth knows except for me. If wow. we say it, then it's no longer. I think you're yeah, a secret, yeah. Uh, that's true. That's no I mean, I know, secrets. I know secrets about my wife that nobody knows. But oh, <laughs> but I'm not gonna tell you those. Yeah. So no one in the world knows those things about my wife. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows the things about me that she knows. So, Charlie, what do you know that no one else knows? <laughs> um, uh, sometimes, after school, I walk into the senior room. And I'm not a senior. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, oh, no. You're going to oh, die. You're on the radar now. <laughs> you're on yeah. the radar now. You're, yeah. you're going to die. Nobody dude. knows. I no one knows. I know. Nobody knows. I know, Charlie. What do I know that no one else knows? Like, I don't know. I got all my knowledge from everyone else. I don't, I don't, I don't know, dude. Ever, yes. I just think don't. about that. I don't know how to answer this question. How do you even most secrets have something to do with like other people? Yes, mm -hmm. right. Uh, that's true. You know, yeah. it's just like I have no idea. Most, how do you answer this question, Louis? I don't know. I was about to say something like a food recipe that I only know that is like amazing, but like I can't tell. Them. <laughs> because it <laughs> yeah. would spoil the secret. So. Right. I mean, I enjoyed. I really like. There's this. Uh, like webtoon comics in mm -hmm. Korea, mm -hmm. and they're really, really popular, but uh, like nobody seems to talk about it. There's this one really good, uh, like a artist who really draws well, but like if I tell it, then like kind of spoils the fun because mm -hmm. you gotta look for it. This mm -hmm. one good artist that uh, draws comics is really cool, but uh, oh. that's about it. That's the only thing so that was like a secret. It's, it's a secret. Song. Yeah, I get that. Like sometimes with like musical artists, it's kind of nice to find like an obscure band or group or right. person because it's like yeah. more special. Because if they're not obscure know. anymore, it's like, uh, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. Half the magic is being. It's obscure. true. It's true. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's it for comment time. Now we're getting into the guest topic. Yes. Epic music. Music. Wow. Young has got all the music dollars yeah. shoved in his head. <laughs> 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 One thing I wanted to ask: you see, there seems to be this divide. <laughs> Let's talk about the divide. You already know where I'm going. Okay, which divide? The divide so between many. between the young people music Indeed. Uh, and the <laughs> old people music. Mm -hmm. What would you say separates these two groups of music the most? <laughs> um, you play a lot of your music in mm -hmm. class. Yeah. And the thing that is almost always prevalent is like it's like it's very like raw and like real. It's genuine, like opposed to like 
pop music mm-hmm. and more like modern music. Mm-hmm. Um, or like a, a perfect example would be K-pop huh. because oh. a lot of the time <laughs> it's very fake. Artificial. It's yeah. artificial. Ooh, it's we've got a big Korean audience, it's, Charlie. It's, I, I, I'm oh, okay with hold, that. Hold on. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's these companies uh, taking trainees and then transforming them into the perfect doll. Go play up on stage with songs that were written by other people right. and tracks produced by other people. Like, how much control do the performers actually have over the creative process of that's, the song? That's None. Right. Like, None. You, you know, you, you really gotta think about that. So, uh, yeah, just a lot of modern music, obviously not all of it, but a lot of it, it's, it's not real, no. in a sense. You know, it, it's very made up. Um, but a lot of the music that you play, a lot of older music, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah, like there's, there's there's more of like a real aspect to it. It's it's more genuine. There's like yeah. a real story and meaning behind it. So mm-hmm. uh, that's just something I noticed between like a lot of modern music and then a lot of the older stuff that I listen to and that you play. So well, honestly, I'll tell you that's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, pop music nowadays. Well, one thing that someone mentioned is that the electric guitar is no longer in the center of pop music. Oh. It's all just beats. You know, you got some schmuck like Drake, you know, and <laughs> all of his, all of his crap. Like he had one Ooh. song, Hotline Bling. It's literally, <laughs> it's literally the bossa nova button on a keyboard. He hippity hoppity a bunch of dribble over top of it. Hotline Bling, you're going to come at night and we're going to see each other. And who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares about that stupid song. Okay. And that <laughs> is... Pretty much all of pop music nowadays, because it is all, all, maybe not all, most. But this is the point, honestly, that that Chuck mentioned, really, is that it's fabricated. It's made by a computer. Someone else wrote it. It's formulaic. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can look this up to where, like, you know, you've got got pop country and bro country and all these new random empty genres to where someone took the top six country songs and the pop country charts... And they're all in the same key. They all have the same structure. They all have the same topic that you're singing about. It's a formula. People are like, people really enjoy when, like, you sing about this and, like, this, like, do, 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 you know, that. Like, people like that. And so, like, if you could put those three notes, I don't know what they are, but, like, do, 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 like, put that in your music, like, all over the place. Like, we would totally sell that song. This is how stupid executives Mm -hmm. talk. So, but this is the problem. Because in the old days, music was hard. You had to have instruments. Yeah. And, and even with the punk mu- movement, the significance of the punk movement was that you could make something simple. Because you, there were a couple of things. You had the virtuosos that you know had like studied and trained for years and right. so you would have someone like you know Led Zeppelin or Pink Floyd where it's very deep and intricate and that's cool. And then punk... You know, the benefit of punk was that anybody could get together and and make an album. And that's actually what inspired U2 in that they realized we don't have to be virtuosos as long as we're passionate about what we're singing. As long as it's real, as long as you can feel it. Yeah. If I can feel it, my audience can feel it. And yes, K-pop is a prime example in that... God bless them, they are. They are formed, literally. They are shaped into dolls. You know, you're going to be the quiet one. You're going to be the sporty one. (laughs) You're going to be the rebellious one. You know, you're going to be the trendy one. And uh, the job that I worked at... so cute, though. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the Korean viewers are angry in there. My my job that I had before coming to Hinkson, there was a girl that uh, worked with us for a period of time that summer, and she was all into K-pop. And I'm watching all these videos because they're on her computer, and it's like a car wreck. I can't look away. But it's like, (laughs) you know, it's like, you know, we were walking at the mall, and our clothes looked real good. And I saw that girl with her friends, and her clothes looked good. <laughs> and our eyes met, and she looked at me, and I looked at her, and like we knew. And we were like, whoa. And all my friends are like, cool. And all her friends were like, hee hee hee. And it was a moment. That's it. That's the song. It's like, you know, when I was wearing, <coughs> wearing that jacket, and it looked really good on me because it really emphasized my shoulders. And like, there's nothing there. It's not real. And so, yeah, yeah. you know, there is a song. What is it? Uh, by Madness. Um, it must be love. 
Um, it came from a poem that some poet wrote at the time. And there are these pickups mm -hmm. by, it was, it was like cellos and violins. They couldn't just sample that. It's dum-dum-dum, dum-dum-dum, dum-dum-dum. Dum, dum, dum. You can do that incredibly easily now. Anybody could do that with some free app that they download onto their phone now. But at the time, they literally yeah. had to find those musicians and hire them and bring them into the studio. Yeah. You know, And even reverb or um, the drums on When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin, everybody was like, how do you get that cool sound? They recorded at a big house in England and they put the drum set in the stairwell so that the drum sound would just kind of rise up. And so you had all these weird techniques that people wow. would do to where it meant something, it was real. Nowadays, you can just like, hey, I can make my song sound like it's in a parking garage. Hey, I can make my song sound like it's recorded in the kitchen, woo! And you didn't have to work to get it, so it doesn't mean anything. And that's the difference. <laughs> Where these people, they had a story. Now, it's not all, you know, there are plenty of bands coming out now, and but they are. They're all revival bands, you know. They're like, man, these people in the 60s really made cool stuff, and so they're all influenced yeah. by people who did something before. That is the one thing that you have in music nowadays in the past 20 years or so is you have a blending of genres, yep. yeah, okay? Yeah. So you might have, like, you know, punk with a little bit of, you know, techno or, or, you know, even classical or punk with straight up jazz elements, yeah. you know, just all sorts of weird <coughs> combinations because you have the opportunity to do so. Yeah. And so that's the real music. But yes, I, I guess I like to play music all the time because I like to play music all the time, but maybe, you know, you know maybe you, maybe you young kids will hear it and say, Hey, that's a cool song. What is it? And I'll be like, yeah, I know it's a cool song. It's this. <laughs> You're welcome. So, so, yeah. Because I am that arrogant. We all have our weaknesses. Woo! Epic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Ah, oh, my pleasure. Thank Amazing. Thank guest. you. Um, make sure to comment, subscribe. We need six more subscribers. That's it, only six for June oh, Hall. We're going to get June Hall on this show. Bro. We're very close. Yeah. So, uh, how many question. subscribers you guys have now? 94. 94. He promised wow. he, he would come on at 100 subs. He didn't think we could do it, but we're like six away. The, yeah. the, the legendary wow. June Hall? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the June Hall. Gasp. I know. <laughs> okay. Imagine him speaking on a podcast, Youngford. Yeah. I suspect it'll be like. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. Basically. Yeah, Pretty much. basically. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. We had a lot of comments on last episode, so thank you. Um, yeah. And if you want to be a guest, um, talk to me, Moses, Charlie. We're trying to get everybody on before the end of the year. And, yeah. See you next Monday. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Peace Bye. out, home slices. We're into your mother's. Home slices. We're ending with that. That's a good <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. home slices. That's what the young kids are saying these days. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not.